can't exchange it. You can't return it. You can't do anything with it. It is for you alone. And that's what's really great about body modification. I don't think it all looks good, but I mean, everyone has their own opinion as to what looks good and what doesn't. So that's up to them. To me, it's kind of like reading a book by its cover. You can't really tell about the person until you really know why they got a tattoo or why they got a brand or why that's the piercing there. If I was to summarize body modification in one single word, it'd have to be individuality. Altering your appearance um, to how you would feel on the inside rather than how an individual should feel in society. Body modification is anything that you can do to modify your body by being hard, piercing, uh, whatever way of form you choose to express it. Um, part of it is letting go of the negative things that we're holding tight to that are hurting us so badly. So the little point of pain that I allow, allows all of that negative energy out. A generation to generation, you know, back then it was taboo. You know, for our parents, a lot of it was taboo. It was like only convicts and like bikers got tattoos and like outlaws. And so now that it's become mainstream and everybody's doing it, it's like, oh, wow. The older, you know, the older generation is still kind of like, oh my God, look at these guys. So it's harder to accept, you know, for, for them, like my parents are, they weren't as accepting as I would be with my son because now I know, you know what I mean, I do it too, I like it. Uh, people think that modified people hate themselves and that they're just constantly working to change themselves. Um, I know a lot of people do have like a picture of what they want to look like in their head because they're not happy with their current appearance. Um, I would be totally happy with my appearance if I didn't have modifications, but I really wouldn't feel like myself. To me, body modifications enhance beauty, they're decorations, um, and that's how it is for most people. So. That's another huge misconception is that we, if we get tattoos, piercings, or even more extreme things, is that we hated ourselves to begin with, which I've never found to be true, ever. The general kind of view of especially extreme body modifications is people think, uh, you know, that they're into sadism, they think that they enjoy the pain. Myself, I'm the exact opposite. I detest getting work done. Absolutely hate it. Just love having it. I'm only doing it because I like how it looks. Um, I actually think people with quite extensive modifications not only have um, quite a, a good understanding of how their body works and are generally quite intelligent being able to research different things and sort of be able to put in the time and the imagination to get certain things done. Each time that we're going to pierce some area of the body we're piercing it for a certain reason and most people have subconscious underlying reasons why they want to be pierced in that area. Sometimes I'll ask people, you know, why did you decide to have this part of your body pierced? Are you having you know, communication problems if they're getting their mouth pierced or their ears pierced? Or do you feel like you're not being listened to? Are you having a hard time hearing someone? And they'll just look at me like, how did you know? How did you know that? I get letters, um, I get letters from people telling me all the time that they were able to reclaim themselves, so they were able to stand up for themselves because of the piercing experience that they had had. Um, I've seen the magic of piercing a certain part of the body and the energy movement work. Um, and that's why I pierce. I don't pierce. Well, to people in our industry, we look at piercings and tattoos as a way of aesthetically enhancing somebody's appearance. It's the same concept to us as, you know, somebody that's not in our industry getting breast implants. All they're doing is they're trying to enhance their appearance. If they're enhancing their self-image and if they're making themselves feel better, as long as it's not in an unhealthy way, why not? Ні Настя готова піти далі. Вона хоче збільшити очі хірургічним методом. Щоб не макіяжем, не косметика їх увеличувати, а вже так, щоб було з допомогою хірургії, щоб менше косметики уходило. Хтось вважає її божевільною. Будь як все, будь нормальний. А для неї бути білою вороною справжнє задоволення. Мене ніколи не задівало мнення оточуючих якісь нас. I was 20 years old. Did you look better when you were 20? Not much. <laughs> uh, I was a, I was a good-looking young man. It's not that I needed a lot of surgery. It's just. Do you um, think you look operated now? 
Do you I think never, you look natural, or do you think you look surgical? I've never wanted to look natural, ever. So you want to look, you, you want people to walk by you and go, whoa. Well, I don't know. I just always wanted keen features. That's why I sought out my first plastic surgeon, Dr. Hofflin. But Ukrainian Valeria Lukyanova says she wasn't content to play with the popular doll. She wanted to look like her. So this 21-year-old buxom blonde has transformed herself and in the process created a controversy. Basically it's a form of expression, but to everybody else, they have, you know, they have their own meanings. You know, it could be something that you have, you look at it or we look at it and be like, why would you get that? But to them it means something more. You know, it's something personal, something deep down, you know, inside it means a lot to them. So, I mean, we just, we've done pretty strange stuff and it just basically just goes down to the person what they like to do. In society in general, I mean, you don't, anything that's not the norm is not going to be as accepted, you know going to the stores and going out and about restaurants and stuff, especially nice places, people do tend to look down uh, upon people that have more of the extreme modifications. I mean, we're not the same to them, you know. But also what I've learned is the people in our industry that have the more extreme modifications, they're, they're the nicest. I think society is working towards being more understanding. I express myself outwardly. So I go home at night and watch TV and go to bed. I'm scared of what the people who don't express themselves are doing in their basements at home at night. Некоторые при встрече пугаются, думают, что я там всех буду как себя красить, что-то увеличивать. Но я говорю, что я всех под одну граблю нет. Я по-разному красу. Unfortunately, society is very important because everybody judges you by your appearance, but you can't always judge a book by its cover because people see me and they think, oh, he's gonna rob me or something. Oh. But at the same time, like, dude, they're probably making more money than you do. I mean, you know, I got my own stuff, but I look like a bad person. The society judges you that way, but it is important. But once you're established or whatever, it doesn't really matter.日本では男性器もないが白い肌が美の象徴とされてきました。だから日本人の女の子は太陽が大嫌い。でも最近そうじゃない女の子たちがいるんです。肌を真っ黒く焼いて彼女たちの大好きなアメリカのヒップホッパ
10代のおしゃれに敏感な子たちにとってここで働くことは憧れです私もやっぱ働いてて全然楽しいですし小さなお店たちが強いコンセプトを持ってそれぞれの世界を主張しながらひしめき合っていますベイビーシュープはブラックフォーライフっていうのがコンセプトでブラックカルチャーもリスペクトみたいな感じなんですけどやっぱ音楽とファッションとダンスはもう日本人じゃないっぽくするっていう感じもあるかなとは、BK、はこのお店で働く女の子は皆、肌を黒く焼いています本当なんか黒肌にしてるのは、やっぱりすごい引き締まって見えるし、健康そうに見えるし、なんかやっぱかっこいい。A growing number of Asian women, both overseas and here at home, are choosing to have eyelid reconstruction. Some want a more Western look, while others say it's more personal. As healthy reporter Barry Carpenter explains, whatever the reason, it's a real eye opener. 24 year old Jennifer Lee is one of a growing number of Asian women who have decided to have eyelid reconstruction. This is her before picture. Pay close attention to the eyes. This is what she looked like a few months after the surgery. Her eyes subtly wider.、Um, my grandmother had it done when she was younger, and my mother had some friends who had it done and were really happy with it, and she never had it done, which she did. What's important with this is just to keep a natural look so that she looks more open eyed. Plano plastic surgeon Dr. Sam Lam wrote the book on Asian cosmetic surgery. Actually, he's written two books in English and Korean. He performs at least one eyelid reconstruction a week. Did that hurt? Does that go through the bone? What are you going to do when you're 60? What are you gonna do when you're like 70? Sick tap, bro! Doesn't that hurt? Ew! Whoa! Can I touch that? I guess. Whoa! Whoa! Did that hurt? How do they do that? No. Does that hurt? Does that go all the way through? Yo! What does that say? Love is. What does that mean? Are those real? Did that hurt? Sweet gauges, bro. Do you need surgery to fix that? Did that hurt? How does that stay in? You were so pretty. Why did you do that to yourself? Doesn't that hurt? Yo, I like those gauges. That's gross. <laughs>